So, it's always welcoming when uh, your opponent gives you free material, but can it always be trusted? Hmm, let's have a look. So, uh, in this position, can this pawn be taken? That's the question. Can this bishop swoop in and capture the pawn? So, before we look at this question, then, let's just assess the position a little bit. So, clearly, it's uh, an end game with uh, equal material, two rooks on either side, bishop on either side, same colour bishops. Pawn count, we have six pawns versus six pawns. Uh, in terms of pawn structure, well, blacks are slightly better. You know, the white's got these two double pawns on the B-file. But for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty, pretty sort of static looking position. But the question remains, can white take this pawn? So let's have a look then. I mean, if you want to pause the video, you can, but I'm just going to talk through it anyway. So let's capture the C7 pawn then, right? So what's to stop black just picking up the bishop? Yeah, free piece. What's, I mean, what's white doing taking that pawn? Well, if you saw this idea of picking up the bishop on b4 and after pawn takes, white goes, takes, takes and wins with the back rank check there. If you saw that, well done because that, pa that sort of pan should be jumping out. However, it doesn't work in this position, right? Because after bishop takes, rook takes, Rook picks up the bishop on b4. Black is not actually forced to take the rook. There is actually a really strong counter move, which makes white look a bit silly. Can you see it? It's actually doubling up on the c-file. Ouch. So, after that, game over. You know, because uh, there's the threat ending of the back rank checkmate in two, so white has to you know, give the, the king a bit of space. And then uh, you can either, then black can either take the rook, and it's just a rook up. Well, probably the more accurate move is just take the rooks off the board. Check, takes, takes, and then pick up the final rook after the king wins, obviously. So looking at the initial question in the uh, initial position, can white pick up this pawn on c7? I'm afraid the answer is a big fat no. <laughs> so, I mean, it's good that these sort of tactics jump out as, as a player looking at this position. You know, that tactic immediately does spring to mind. The bishop takes c7 and then clipping the, the bishop here with back rank, checkmate in view. But what you've got to do, I think, is uh, once you see a pattern like that spring out, you have to sort of double check that you can actually do it. So uh, in most cases, like let's say in this position, white has got one of these pawns moved, right? So the king has got a bit of space. If pawn was on h3, for example, let's just, you know, put the king further in the corner. Now in this position, Obviously, you can take the pawn, right? Because then there's there's no back rank check, mate. Right, so you can you know just move move away. So so it's always useful, I think, to bear in mind, you know, to to, to trust the patterns coming in, but then to sort of double check them. So, so don't run away. So I've got a bonus position for you. So keeping that sort of thing in mind, then uh, let's have a look at the next position. So then let's have a look at this uh, bonus position. Can you take the rook? Can black? pick up the uh, e2 rook. So, when I first looked at this position, I thought, well, ah, maybe there's a queen trap going on. Like, So I'll, I'll put the position on the board, actually. So, queen takes, obviously, when I'm looking at the position and you're calculating, I'm, I'm not moving the pieces. I'm doing that in my head. But just to, for illustration purposes, I'll, I'll do this. So I thought, actually, in, in this position, if queen takes rook on e2, then maybe something like rook e3 traps a queen. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes getting forced round here, it looks like it can get trapped at some point. But then I thought, well no, because the Queen can just drop straight back into and into H5. And you know, I obviously looked at G4, but even after G4, like you can you can just drop the Queen back. The second thing I looked at was just Queen takes on F6. And then the the you know the immediate pattern sprang to mind that's in my chess patterns code. After takes, check King coming into her check, we have the checkmate. So I thought, ah, nice, it's a nice position. Really like this idea. Uh, so you can't take the rook due to this pattern. But then hold on. What about this? <laughs> so let's go back to the original position again. So Queen takes rook, Queen takes knight and f6. And can you spot a move here that like might be playable for black? Well, well done if you saw this idea 
of instead of taking the queen, this remarkably brilliant inventive move. Queen g4. <laughs> right. And what queen g4 does is obviously the queen protects the uh, g7 pawn right from checkmate. So then the queen can't take immediately. Uh, so you might be thinking, well, we, we can just take the, take the queen, right? Well, okay, after takes and then takes, the rook can no longer deliver checkmate along the g-file because thanks to his own pawn blocking the, the check. So, the answer to the original question, can you take the rook on e2? Yeah, absolutely, snap it up. <laughs> so, thanks for watching then. Uh, I hope you like these two positions. Uh, I just saw these and I thought they'd be really good. So, the YouTube algorithm is very kindly recommending you another video above. If you want to click on that, I'll save it for later, you can do. And if you want to click on that grey face above, uh, you can subscribe to uh, more content because I'm, uh, I've got a little bit of time on my hands at the moment. Not much, but a little bit. And I'm, I'm whacking out these videos, you know, so... Um, it's useful if people subscribe and then I'm not talking to myself, <laughs> basically. Uh, but thanks if you have subscribed and thank you for watching the video. Goodbye. Have a good rest of your day.